The word best gets thrown around a lot in the YouTube space, but when I say it, I mean it. For these types of videos, I'm expecting quite a bit of newcomers to the channel who are probably going, who is this guy? What is his credentials? Who is he to tell me what are the best sounding true wireless buds? So allow me to introduce myself. Hello, I'm Chronicle. I run Chronicle.com in Ear Fidelity, and I currently host and maintain the <clears throat> world's largest public database of headphone and earphone measurements. Not a flex. Just the facts. I'm also known for my ranking list of IEMs and headphones, where I've tested over a thousand plus IEMs and over 200 headphones, respectively. And of course, in this case, my TWS bias guides, where even though it's not my specialty, I've also tested over 35 models. Any other disclaimers I have also listed down on this video. So if you have any problems with my methodology or my opinions, please watch this video before commenting. And if you want to buy some audio gear, why not watch this ad read where I talk about headphones.com. Sponsor of this video. Headphones.com is the premier online audio retailer for those of you residing in the continental United States as well as Canada. Pick and choose from a wide range of enthusiast level products ranging from DAX, AMS, IEMs, and of course, headphones. And to sweeten the deal, headphones.com also has an unprecedented 365 day return policy. So if you want to, you could also just use them to try out some headphones that you otherwise wouldn't be able to try. There is still a restocking fee, but it's so much better than having to sell your regrets at a loss, right? Go to headphones.com, tell them I sent you, and of course, support the people who support me. So before I start talking about my life story, let me just stop right here and start talking about the actual main point of this entire video the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. Now I'm gonna do the exact opposite of what most other tech tubers do and just quickly gloss over everything that isn't about sound because that's my shtick. I'm the audio specialist. Come to me for the audio analysis and literally nothing else. Build quality is good. This uses a full rubberized plastic build. The hinge is fine. Overall, there's not a lot of complaints that I can give. Samsung used the same design language that they used on the Buds Pro, which we then used for the Buds 2, and now you can see it on the Buds 2 Pro. There is a five hour battery life with ANC on, which is unfortunately below the power of six hours within the wireless bud market. The charging case also contributes to another 18 hours, which is not terrible, but that also means that you have to remember to charge them every day or every other day if you're thinking about daily driving them. There's also an IPX7 water resistance rating, which means you could wear them in the rain just fine and it is more than capable of handling gym use. Fit is fine for my ears, but stuff like fit and comfort is going to vary wildly between person to person. So just because I found it fine doesn't mean that you are going to as well. Also the reason why I don't like to talk about it so much because people are just going to come after my ass just because I said it's fine for me and then they said like, oh no, it's not fine for me. It's, it fits horribly. That's it. It's small, it's light, and just like every other Galaxy Buds before it, I even wear it to sleep sometimes. Connectivity and convenience is also very good, but clearly I am biased because I myself am daily driving a Samsung phone. Thanks Samsung, I'm going to post a review on it eventually, I promise. If you want to know about usability with other Android phones or even on an iPhone, you could just ask other people or watch other reviews because just like a normal person, I'm going to just be daily driving this one singular one. I'm not about to try daily driving more. And as for the active noise cancellation. Actually, this one I don't want to gloss over, so let's just put on our nerd hats a little bit earlier. Let's get technical. Now, a bit of a primer course, noise cancellation is simply the act of cancelling noise. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Who said that? Now, there's two ways to cancel noise. First of which is active, which is the current topic and probably the one that you've seen talked about the most. And then there is the second way, which is the linguistic opposite of active passive. Now, what is the difference between the two, you may ask? Well, if you would just let me finish, you impatient little sh Let's just talk about passive noise cancellation first, because it's the one that makes the most sense. Passive in this context simply means the absence of any electronic control. So if you take your hands and just put it over your ears just like this, uh, this is passive noise cancellation. You know those industrial safety earmuffs, no electronics, just put it over your ears and bam, the noise cancelled. 
absolute magic. So with active noise cancellation or ANC for short, electronics are used instead. So to condense what is a very technical and long-winded topic into something digestible, what happens in an ANC headphone is that there is two sets of microphones, first of which is the microphone outside that picks up noise from your environment, plus one extra microphone between your ear and the driver that picks up what you are going to hear. There is a microprocessor somewhere in the headphone that takes this information and then creates a negative of the outside noise, which in this case, I will now start to refer to as the anti-noise. So the microprocessor take this anti-noise and then mixes it into the music that you're listening to. Music plus noise plus anti-noise equals just music noise cancel. Now I know I'm glossing over a lot of things like DSP algorithms, reference versus error microphones, the concept of destructive interference, but to all the nerds out there, I'm only leaving all of this out for the benefit of our new friends. Don't get up my ass about it. So you may be thinking to yourself, Akrina, why are you talking about all of these now? You could have just made all of these a separate video. Why are you shoehorning it into a product reviewer? You're partially right, but the reason why I'm doing all of this explanation now is because of one statement that I want to make. The active noise cancellation on the Buds 2 Pro is great. Class leading, in fact. But the passive noise cancellation on the Buds 2 Pro hot garbage. Passive noise cancellation on these true wireless buds is easy to ascertain. Simply go into your app, turn it off, and there you go. Whatever you're hearing is purely passive noise isolation. Simple. So the thing about ANC is that at least in this day and age, it is still not good enough to cancel out the entire range of human hearing. Currently, ANC is most effective at the low frequencies, that is to say about 1000 Hz and below. Above that range, ANC basically doesn't work. Now, there are some brands who have attempted to have some high frequency ANC, such as the Grell TWS1, but unfortunately, they don't work. So basically, when it comes down to a high frequency cancellation, all of it boils down to the passive side. Too long didn't watch, ANC is good at something like cancelling out the noise of an airplane, but uh, the baby that's sitting right behind you screaming its lungs out the entire flight? Tough luck, kid. Anyways, back to the Batsu Pro. The ANC is great. When I go onto a bus or a train and I turn it on, I hear basically none of the vehicle noises. It's eerie, it's unsettling, it's absolutely magical. But the problem is, that's it. The best way that I can explain the isolation of the Buds 2 Pro with ANC on is not necessarily an overall reduction in the noise, but more as if the base of my surroundings just got turned down. Like if I'm wearing my Buds 2 Pros outdoors, it's as if I'm listening to the world at a higher pitch. And that's all due to the fact that the Buds Pro is letting in too much of the high frequencies of my surroundings into my ears. Now, this could be due to a lot of things, the housing material, the housing design, the fit, because it's quite shallow. But regardless of what the actual reasons are, the final results are clear as day. And this problem basically demonstrates my problem with the TWS market in general. All of these companies get into an arms race for ANC technology, focusing on that very narrow band that ANC targets and almost neglecting the passive isolation performance of the rest of the frequency band. So this is not a problem that is exclusive to the Buds 2 Pro, but I am using the Buds 2 Pro as an example here. The other Galaxy Buds models, the Apple AirPods Pro, the Sony WF series, Bose, Anchor Sound Call, all of which have terrible passive noise isolation performance and are basically relying on their ANC to hard carry them. So the ultimate too long didn't watch for this section, the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro is great at cancelling out low noises but kind of terrible at cancelling out high noises so it sounds like your surroundings don't have bass as opposed to truly muffling everything okay that section took way longer than expected so let's now move on to the section that most people probably skip to the sound so yeah you have been thoroughly spoiled by the title yes and i think it always surprises people when i tell them that samsung that korean conglomerate that makes everything from smart fridges to amusement parks yes that's a thing look it up also makes some of the world's best sounding true wireless buds 
But if you're a nerd like me, then you've probably also seen this coming a mile away. But before we get into the how, I guess we first have to address why exactly the Buds 2 Pro is yet another audiophile approved banger from Samsung. As with basically every other Galaxy Buds model, the Buds 2 Pro is also tuned with the Harman Target as a reference point. For those out of the loop, the Harman Target is a tuning target created by Harman International and is, according to their research, statistically, the sound signature that is preferred by the most amount of listeners. The characteristics of the Harman target is basically 10 decibels of bass boost starting from 200 hertz, with a pinner gain of about 12 decibels peaking at 3000 hertz, followed by a treble roll off. Now, the Buds 2 Pro isn't tuned exactly to the Harman target, something like the AKG N400 or the original Galaxy Buds Plus will be far closer in that regard. But it is the slight liberties that the sound engineers have taken with the Buds 2 Pros that make them, in my opinion, a lot more palatable than its predecessors. And in my opinion, once again, the best sounding true wireless bud on the market right now. The most striking difference is that the Buds 2 Pro has the big upper mids hum from the Harman target slightly toned down. Now, most of my current subscribers would know that my main criticism of the Harman target is its relative intensity of its large upper mid-range tuning. Almost everyone I know in the audio enthusiast space have described the Harman IEM target as some form of shouty or even intense. And in general, I I agree as well, which is why you see in my own neutral target, IF neutral, I have set my pinner gain rise at about 8 decibels compared to the Harman target's 12 decibels. The Buds Pro in this region is tuned slightly under Harman, not quite to the level of my IEF neutral target, but it's to the point where I find it more pleasant sounding compared to the other hard Harman IEMs like the N400 or the Buds Plus. One thing that I do agree on with Harman target is roughly where the bass rise should be and that is roughly at about 200 hertz. What this does is that it allows the bass to be boosted pretty high up without it bleeding into the melodic frequencies. You get a lot of that sub bass rumble that tends to get lost in the transition from speakers to something like in IEMs. Now, the amount of bass and by Harman researchers own admission is purely up to preference. You have users who like maybe a three decibel boost, some going all the way up to 15, but the research sets the average at about 10 decibels. And that is roughly where the Buds 2 Pro sit at. It is a lot personally, but it's also very well controlled owing to that 200 hertz rise, so busy bass lines are mostly free from congestion. That's it, in terms of technical performance, it's not quite the best. The bass hits can be a little bit fuzzy and I wish it was a lot more dynamic relative to the actual amount being served to your ears. And for that reason, I would still prefer the bass on the N400. Now my biggest issue right now with the Buzz 2 Pro is with the treble. This is not that even that big of an issue, you could even call it a nit pick, but it is still enough to bother me. So I just wish that the Buds 2 Pro has a little bit more treble, more specifically around the 10,000 hertz region. In its current form, the Buds 2 Pro is a little bit veiled, like boosting up the 10,000 hertz region by about 5 decibels helps improve the clarity immensely and just makes me wish that the Galaxy Wearables app had some form of a custom parametric EQ. Uh, then again, I know that this is a wireless bud and it's made for the mass market, so they're not going to add in power user features like that, right? And speaking of the wearables app, the EQ profiles. Now, according to Samsung, the preset EQs on the Buds 2 Pro go through the same level of DSP chain as with on the stock tuning. So in theory, there is no degradation to the audio signal at all. But the degradation of the signal is a completely separate topic from the actual quality of the presets themselves. So let me just fire off my impressions of all of the available ones right now. Bass boost EQ, uh, muddy, it's not a good bass boost. Soft EQ, basically a better version of the bass boost EQ. It's, it's better, but uh, that's still not a fan of it. Dynamic EQ boosts the bass as well as the treble. Basically, it's a V-shaped EQ. 
I'm okay with it, I guess. Clear EQ, drops the bass and then boosts the treble. Sounds tinny and weird. No, treble boost EQ, I don't even know what's going on. Sounds terrible. In general, my favorite would still be the stock tuning and it's the one that I still use most of the time. Now, I'm not going to be chat sizing uh, Samsung for providing more options to the consumers, but it is what it is. I'm just not a big fan of the other presets. <sighs> okay, now onto the obvious comparisons with the other Galaxy Bud models. The Galaxy Buds lineup is actually very consistent in my books. Every single time when Samsung releases a new one, it almost always gets slotted up near the top of my TWS rankings, and it's no surprise why. You know the Harman thing that I've been talking about? The company Harman International is actually owned by Samsung. So in effect, Samsung also owned brands like Harman Kardon, obviously, Bang & Olufsen Automotive, JBL, Mark Levinson, Revel, and of course, AKG. So basically, Samsung has direct access to all of the research that all of these brands have done over the years, more specifically Harman International, which is why you see all of their Galaxy Buds lineup is tuned to some variation of the Harman target. So when I do this comparison with other Galaxy Buds, just know that the word refinement is going to be used quite often because that's just how it is. There is no significant step up, just minor improvements in increments with each new generation. So versus the Buds Pro, the Buds 2 Pro is a refinement. The Buds Pro is tuned to what I'll consider warm Harman, that is to say they have filled out the lower mid-range region of 200Hz to about 1000Hz. This gives the Buds 2 Pro a richer and deeper feel to the nose as compared to the Buds 2 Pro, but at the expense of clarity and unfortunately also results in a little bit of bloat. Between the two, it really depends on whether you prefer more or less lower mids, but for my own money, I'm going to pick the Buds 2 Pro for all the reasons that I've stated before. Now, versus the Buds two, they are actually more similar than different. The Buds 2 and the Buds 2 Pro on paper are basically identical from the lower mids below. You're going to get roughly the same kind of bass response, but where they differ is near the treble region. The Buds 2 Pro more or less has my ideal amount of buffer mids, but when it comes to the treble, it gets a little bit spicy, which basically means that it has the direct opposite problem to the Buds 2 Pro. Between the two, I'll still pick the Buds 2 Pro, but that's because I find its treble flaw a little bit more palatable than on the Buds 2. The Buds Plus and the original Buds are discontinued, but I'm just going to touch on them briefly just in case there are some people who are still using them today and are looking for an upgrade. The the original buds are very good, still one of the better sounding true wireless buds even till today. But next to the Buds 2 Pro, it's clear that all the years of refinement have resulted in a wholly superior product. The bass response is probably the biggest difference with the Buds 2 Pro having that well executed bass rise as compared to the original Buds, which is a lot more anemic in comparison and honestly far less suited for outdoor use for that reason. The Buds Plus is closer to the Buds 2 Pro in terms of bass, but the difference here is that the Buds Plus, as I mentioned before, is tuned bang on on Harman, which means it could get a little bit shouty and trill, especially when it comes to the higher ranged instruments. Then there's also the issue with the Buds Plus's treble, where it sounds really odd and bit crushed. So this is just a net win for the Buds 2 Pro, in my opinion. Now, let's move away from the Samsung ecosystem, and now let's talk about the competition from the other brands. The Apple AirPods Pro is probably the most obvious competitor to the Buds 2 Pro, given that they are both the flagship wireless buds from the two biggest rivals in the smartphone space. And yes, Apple just announced the AirPods Pro 2, but clearly I do not have the clout to get Apple products early. But whenever I do review the AirPods 2 Pro, you can be sure that I will be comparing it with the Buds 2 Pro. Anyways, the original AirPods Pro, contrary to unfounded popular belief, is actually one of the better sounding true wireless buds out in the market today. I often recommend them to people who aren't audiophiles who are more or less locked into the Apple ecosystem because they are convenient, they just work, they are genuinely good true wireless buds. Next to the Buds 2 Pro, however, at least purely in terms of sound, the Buds 2 Pro just runs circles around the AirPods Pro. So much better bass, the mid-range is just more correct, and in general, the Buds 2 Pro just feel more 
refined. Now, in general, I'll still recommend the AirPods Pro to non-audiophile Apple users any day, but if it's only sound quality that you're looking for, not even a contest, but still pro all the way. Now, what about Sony? The absolute darling child of the wireless bud market with every bloody tech tuber calling them the best wireless bus that you can get for the money. So here's the thing. I hold the Sony WF series of wireless buds to very high regard. The WF-1000 XM3s I had called the best sounding true wireless buds at the time it was released and at the time, it was groundbreaking. Now, the WF-1000 XM4, on the other hand, I don't like as much, unfortunately. It's still a great true wireless bud, but I feel like they've tuned it closer to the WH series of headphones, which sound like it was made for someone with hearing loss in the bass. I just fear for the WF-1000 XM5s now because I feel like the Sony engineers are gonna tune them like Raycons. Anyways, compared to the Buds 2 Pro, you can see where I'm going here. I just prefer the Buds 2 Pro because I feel like they've executed the signature that they're trying to do better than what the XM4 tried to do. But at the same time, they're both tuned differently. The XM4 is more warm as opposed to the Buds 2 Pro, which is kind of like that Harman-ish bassy signature. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison. I still feel love for the XM3s and to a certain extent the XM4s, but there's something about the 200 Hz bass rise of the Buds 2 Pro that just contributes so much to clarity whilst allowing for a quite a large amount of bass. I'm just gonna stop at Apple and Sony for now, but for a full list of all the other True Wireless Buds that compete with the Buds 2 Pro, you can go down to my True Wireless Buyers Guide on Chronicle.com. Or you can just go down to my IEM ranking list where I have all 1000 plus IEMs that I've tested all ranked in a table. So all of that is just justification and reasoning for my opinions as well as the title of this video. So don't blame me for any clickbait because that is genuinely what I believe. The Buds Pro is currently, and in my opinion, the best sounding true wireless buds, but just because it is the best sounding doesn't mean that it's flawless. If there was some way to tighten up the speed of the bass to make it not feel so sluggish or improve the resolution that's probably bottlenecked by the Bluetooth codec, then not only would it be a market breaker in the TWS space, but also in the audiophile space as well. But for now, the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro gets my rating of S minus for tonality, B for technicals for an overall ranking of B plus. Two value stars at its MSRP of 230 USD. For those who have absolutely no idea of what I've just said, please go down to my IEM ranking list where I have everything nicely explained all for you. And with all that said and done, I would like to now thank my big bunny boys for all of you have subscribed to the $20 tier on my Patreon. Here are all of your beautiful names. And for those who have subscribed to the $30 tier, allow me to speak out again your beautiful names. Mike Madface, Dennis, Laughing Psychonaut, HK57, TJ Daily, Charlie Rose. 222, Krina Gal, Rodrigo, The Angry Persian, Alicia Burrito, Alex, Lawrence, Frit, Andrew, Kevin, Nice Luigi, Unemployed Pit, Vanderwit, Posychronic, and Ember. I thank you all. This has been a far longer video than I expected. There's currently like an hour plus of raw footage, but that's just the YouTube grind for you. See you next week and don't die. Oh, fuck. Fuck up. <laughs>